black holes are some of the most mysterious objects in the universe. But how exactly do they work? How are they created? How do we observe them? And how do we even understand them? Well, this video is all about black holes. A black hole is a region of space from which nothing, not even light, can escape. According to the general theory of relativity, it is a result of the curving of space-time caused by being composed of dense mass. Around a black hole, there is a position of no return. This is known as the event horizon. Black holes are called black because they absorb all the light that hits it, reflecting nothing. This is known as the perfect black body in thermodynamics. A black hole is discovered or found by its interaction with matter. The presence of a black hole can be inferred by tracking the movement of a group of stars that orbit the region of space. Alternatively, when gas falls into a black hole, caused by a companion star or nebula, the gas swirls inward, heating it to very, very high temperatures and emitting large amounts of radiation. This radiation can be detected from Earth-bound or Earth-orbiting telescopes. Astronomers have identified numerous stellar black hole candidates and have also found evidence of supermassive black holes at the center of most galaxies. In fact, in 2008, astronomers found very, very strong compelling evidence that a supermassive black hole of more than 4 million solar masses was located near the region of Sagittarius A star at the center of our very own Milky Way galaxy. This was by observing the motion of nearby stars for more than 16 years. But to understand black holes, we must understand how gravity works, and our best theory for this is from Albert Einstein, with his explanation of gravity called general relativity. It's quite a complicated theory though, but there are two important things that you must understand. One, mass causes space to bend or curve. This is known as space-time, and the moving things within the universe, or things with mass, follow these curves in space, and this is what we call gravity. 2. Light always travels at the same speed, and is also affected by gravity. If this speed does change, this means it is travelling along a curve in space-time. But how exactly are black holes created? The gravitational collapse of a very high-mass star is responsible for the formation of all the stellar-mass black holes, i.e. the smaller black holes, in the entire universe. Star formation in the early universe may have been a result of very, very massive stars, which upon their collapse would have provided black holes with very, very high solar masses. That is basically a hundred times more massive than our sun. These black holes could have seeded the supermassive black holes that are found in the centers of most galaxies. Whilst most of the energy released in the gravitational collapse of a black hole is emitted very quickly, an outside observer looking at this event does not actually see the end of this process. Even though the collapse takes a finite amount of time, a distant observer sees the infalling material slow and halt just above the event horizon. This is due to gravitational time dilation. Light from the collapsing material then takes longer and longer to reach the observer, with the light emitted just before the event horizon forms. And when this event horizon forms, it can take an infinite amount of time. So in conclusion, an external observer never sees the formation of the event horizon. Instead, the collapsing material seems to become dimmer and dimmer, increasing in redshift, and eventually fading away. Most black holes are made of supermassive dying stars, and leave behind a mass that is at least one solar mass. Stars basically die when they run out of hydrogen and other fuel materials, and this carries on until iron is produced. Iron does not give off energy, and therefore the star has no fuel. In a short amount of time, the star will collapse. A supergiant star's death is known as a supernova. Stars basically work in an equilibrium. This basically means that they are making enough energy to push their masses outwards against the force of gravity which is pulling inwards. When the star runs out of fuel to make the energy, the gravity takes over. Gravity pulls the center of the star inward very quickly. 
This happens basically several thousand times in a single second, and eventually it will start to collapse. The star then starts expanding again, but again the nuclear fusion runs out. This continues until the star cannot make any more energy, and then can make its final collapse. The collapse is so fast, and very violent. This makes a massive shock wave when it happens, and causes the rest of the star to explode outward. As the gravity pushes the star inward, the pressure of the centre of the star reaches such an extreme level that the heavier molecules like iron and carbon start to interact, releasing more energy. It can outshine an entire galaxy. The centre of the star is so dense that a teaspoon of this material could sink to the centre of the core of planet Earth. But if the remaining mass is below one solar mass, it forms into a white dwarf. If it is from one to three solar masses, it forms into a neutron star, and if it's over three solar masses, it forms into a black hole. It's also worth mentioning that all the heavier elements, like carbon, oxygen, and all the metals that make up the Earth, the Moon, and all the living things on the planet, can only form in the extreme pressure at the centre of a supernova. This means that supernovas basically seed the next generation of stars and solar systems. Black holes have also been found in almost every galaxy in the universe. These are called supermassive black holes, and they are the biggest black holes of them all. They formed when the universe was extremely young, and also helped form all the galaxies. Quasars are believed to be powered by gravity collecting material into supermassive black holes. Since light can't escape the supermassive black holes, the escaping energy is generated outside the event horizon by gravitational stresses and immense friction. This basically forms two jets on either side of the black hole. These black holes are much more massive than just simply stellar black holes. Several dozen nearby large galaxies have no sign of quasar activity, but they do contain these supermassive black holes at their centres, so therefore it is thought that all large galaxies have one supermassive black hole at their centre, and were once very active at the start of the universe, so therefore it's safe to assume that in the early universe, quasars were quite a common phenomenon. At the middle of a black hole, there is a gravitational centre called a singularity. It is impossible to see this because the gravity prevents any light escaping. Around this tiny singularity, there is a large area where light gets sucked in as well instead of normally passing by. The edge of this area is called the event horizon, and the gravity of a black hole gets weaker and weaker with distance. The event horizon is the place furthest away from the middle where the gravity is still strong enough to trap light. Outside the event horizon, light and matter will still be pulled toward the black hole. If a black hole is surrounded by matter, the matter will form into an accretion disk, gathering material around the black hole. These accretion disks look very similar to the rings of Saturn, but when this material gets sucked in, the matter gets very hot and produces radiation. This radiation is X-rays. Most black holes are too far away to be seen, but we can see the accretion disks and the jets that are produced by the black holes. The only way to know if there's a black hole is by seeing how the stars, gas and light behave around it. With a black hole nearby, even objects as big as a star can move very quickly and in very strange directions. Another means of this is when observing a black hole and it passes between the observer and a source of light, the light bends around the black hole, creating a mirror image. This effect is known as gravitational lensing. One final phenomenon about black holes is something that is a bit of a paradox. Does the black hole really destroy things, take things out of the universe, and destroy information? This is where Hawking radiation comes in. Hawking radiation is black body radiation, which is emitted by a black hole, due to quantum effects near the event horizon. It is named after the late physicist Stephen Hawking, who provided a theoretical argument for its existence in 1974. 
Hawking radiation reduces the mass and the energy of the black hole and is therefore known as black hole evaporation. This happens because of a virtual particle-antiparticle pairs. Due to this phenomena called quantum fluctuations, this is when one of the particles falls into the black hole and the other gets away with the mass and the energy. And because of this, black holes lose more mass than they gain through any other type of means in the universe. So therefore, black holes eventually do shrink and ultimately disappear and vanish. Black holes are some of the most mysterious things in our universe, from a theoretical argument to observations of how they work and how gravity really develops in our universe. This is how black holes are formed, how we discover them, and how we understand them. So I hope that's given you a great insight into black holes. If you'd like to know a little bit more detail on black holes, I put some videos in the description below. And as always, if you have enjoyed the video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to help the channel out, you can subscribe or you can help our Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, we'd like to say thank you very much for the support on the channel.